at this opening of Holy Week, perhaps there is only one thing that matters. It is a question of invitation. Shall I accept the invitation this year to attend this drama of love and betrayal? Shall I bring to it all the anguish and ecstasy of my own loves and betrayals? Or shall I stand at a safe distance? Perhaps I can just be part of the chorus and do some suitable garment rending for the purpose of purgation of pity and fear. Or is something deeper required? Something that costs not less than everything. I hover at the edge, uncertain at the alternatives set before me. Some of us do not need to be invited, because this is a place to which we have already been consigned. We have no choice. We are already at a place of pain, grief, or loss. We are already in the vineyard of love and violence. Where life and death contend, and meaning itself seems threatened with obliteration. The apparent contradiction of divine love and divine judgment has become unbearable to us. There is seemingly no escape from the stuckness of despair that we already know too well. We are deep in the agony of the passion, like it or not. For others, there is a loss of meaning in a different sense. The story is just too familiar. The regular sight of violence and death on the evening news does not even put us off our TV dinner. Our Christian meaning system has lost both its power and its glory. We subscribe to it with our lips, but when asked to go up again to Jerusalem, we find ourselves. This year, too tired, too busy, and underlyingly too fearful to face it. There is indeed an escape via aversion, and we can choose to take it. Or perhaps we sense this year that we stand at the edge of some new discovery. Either because Jesus beacons us for the first time into the deeper meaning of his death, or because our narrative repetitions have broken down even our most resistant inertia. Now the waters close over our heads, and we stand with and in the narrative of the mystery of redemption in all the darkness and hopelessness of those first disciples. Who loved Jesus just as much as they also betrayed him. In this third way, the pulsing chronology of despair and new hope are vitally related because they press us inexorably forward. The unbearable contradiction of divine judgment and divine love is to be resolved. Not by clever argument or falsely anticipated theological resolution, but by entering, waiting, undergoing these days of passion and salvation. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. So Isaiah describes the primal erotic intensity of the drama of God's love for His people. Israel, here is a God who creates all the lush conditions of fulfillment that one might ever desire, and even sets up the tower of defense in the vineyard against the intruding enemy. But the people repeatedly rebel in a terrible amnesia about this primary truth of love. This love song falls on deaf ears, and now, approaching his own passion, Jesus explicitly recalls these lessons of Isaiah, but with a new twist. It is not only the prophets who have been ignored in the primal vineyard; he tells the crowds and the Pharisees. 
but the very son of the vineyard owner who has been beaten and killed by its own tenants. Here is the final betrayal and God has seemingly run out of options. Only in Matthew's account does Jesus turn to the crowds and ask them what should be done to resolve this new crisis of the cruel murder of the son. The answer from the crowd is unambiguous and expected. He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants. Judgment must follow disobedience. The books must be kept. The economy of order and calculation respected. Love and justice must be seen to be in alliance. The vineyard of love can surely only belong to the righteous. But Jesus does nothing to endorse the crowd's response, for this is but the start of unraveling of the passion, in which everything is going to be turned upside down, including everything we think we know about love and justice. The very stone which the builders rejected is to become the chief cornerstone. Holy Week is an invitation, not to a mere drama, but to a passion to end all dramas, not to a story of justice and deserts, but to a story of divine love so exquisite as to exceed and upturn all justice as we know it, not to a theological conundrum to be solved, but to a dangerous and life-threatening journey, a journey of pain, death, discovery, and new life. This is a journey that can only be undergone, and it can only start with the profound lament for our ongoing resistance and aversion to its strange meaning. Let's pray. God of love, only in you we can nourish the true peace. Only through your life we nourish true life. You invited us to the journey, so let us follow the way. Correct our distorted knowledge while we walk the journey of the cross and heal our wounded souls. Give us courage to face our broken hearts with truth and change us to live a new life revealing your glory to the world. Amen.